In this lesson, we will take a look at evaluating two indefinite integrals using the method of u substitution. Analyzing the first integral, we can either let u equal sine 8x or u equal cosine 8x. If we let u equal the sine function, differential u is going to involve the cosine function, and because the cosine function is in the position of the exponent, that's not going to work. We're actually going to let u equal the exponent of 8 cosine x, because we'll be applying the integration formula for the integral of e to the u du. So if we let u equal cosine 8x, differential u is equal to the derivative of cosine 8x times dx, which is equal to negative sine 8x times 8, or negative 8 sine 8x dx. Notice to differentiate cosine 8x, we had to apply the chain rule. And now let's compare what we have to the integral. If u is equal to cosine 8x, now we have e to the power of u, and notice we're left with two sine 8x dx, and we have du equals negative eight sine 8x dx. So we can either divide both sides by negative four, so the right side is exactly two sine 8x dx, or we can solve for sine 8x dx. I'm gonna go ahead and solve for sine 8x dx because it's not always easy to determine what to multiply or divide by to get a perfect match with the integral. So I'm gonna go ahead and divide both sides by negative eight. Simplifying, we have negative one eighth du equals sine eight x dx. Which means now we can substitute negative one eighth du for sine eight x dx. So let's go ahead and write the integral in terms of u. Let's first factor out the two, which gives us two times the integral and then again, sine eight x dx is equal to negative one eighth du. u. Let's go ahead and factor out the negative one eighth. And then we have du. And then we have e to the power of u, since u is equal to cosine eight x. Two times negative one eighth is negative one fourth. And the integral of e to the u du is equal to e to the u plus c. So we have negative one fourth e to the u plus c. Now we need to write this back in terms of x, where u is equal to cosine 8x. The final antiderivative is negative 1 fourth e to the power of cosine 8x plus c. And we often identify the result of an indefinite integral or the antiderivative using big F of x, where here big F of x, again, is equal to negative 1 fourth times e to the power of cosine 8x plus c where this is the family of functions whose derivative is equal to the given integrand function. And we say family of functions because remember, c can be any constant. Now looking at our second example, we have a choice of letting u equal cosine x or u equal three plus two tangent x. Well, if u is equal to cosine x, then differential u is equal to negative sine x times dx, and we don't have a sine function as part of the integral, and if we let u equal three plus two tangent x, differential u is equal to two secant squared x dx. And we don't have secant squared either, but remember, four divided by cosine squared x is equal to four secant squared x, because one divided by cosine x is equal to secant x. So let's rewrite the given integral as the integral of four secant squared x, all divided by Let's write the square root using a rational exponent of one half, which means we can write this as divided by the quantity three plus two tangent x raised to the power of one half, and we still have dx. So again, now we'll let u equal three plus two tangent x, and therefore differential u is equal to the derivative of three plus two tangent x times dx, which gives us two secant squared x dx. And now let's compare u and du to the given integral. If u is equal to three plus two tangent x, the denominator is now u to the power of one half, and we're left with four secant squared dx. Here we have a choice. We can multiply both sides by two, so the right side is exactly four secant squared x dx, or we can solve for secant squared x dx. I'm gonna go ahead and solve for secant squared x dx, because it's not always easy to determine what to multiply or divide by to get an exact match for the given integral. 
By dividing both sides by 2, we now know that 1 half du is equal to secant squared x dx, which means we can substitute 1 half du for secant squared x dx, and we can factor out the 4. So let's first factor out the 4, which gives us 4 times the integral. And then again, secant squared x dx is equal to 1 half du. We'll factor out the 1 half, and then we have du. And we have u to the power of 1 half in the denominator, and therefore the integrand function is 1 divided by u to the power of 1 half. 4 times 1 half is 2 times the integral of, to apply the power rule of integration, let's write 1 divided by u to the power of 1 half as u to the power of negative 1 half du. And now we integrate with respect to u, giving us 2 times u to the power of negative 1 half plus 1 is positive 1 half, divided by positive 1 half plus c. Let's simplify. Dividing by 1 half is equivalent to multiplying by the reciprocal of 2 over 1, which gives us 2 times 2 over 1, or just 2, times u to the power of positive 1 half plus c. Simplifying and writing back in terms of x, we have 4 times u to the power of 1 half is really 3 plus 2 tangent x to the power of 1 half and then plus c. If we want to, we can rewrite this as 4 times the square root of the quantity 3 plus 2 tangent x plus c. And again, let's write this as big F of x. Big F of x is equal to 4 times the square root of the quantity 3 plus 2 tangent x plus c. Again, this is the family of functions whose derivative is equal to the given integrand function. I hope you found this helpful.